Tomorrow, New York City Council is going to consider a bill to regulate the growing number of sidewalk sheds here in New York City. As we've reported, there have been numerous safety issues with these sheds, one of them collapsing on a woman in 2017. And yet, more and more of them are popping up. Eyewitness News investigative reporter Jim Hoffer here with more on what the city wants to do. Diana, it appears that the city has lost control of this spread of sidewalk sheds across Manhattan and the boroughs. We've discovered that in a little more than a year, the number of these ugly metal plywood structures have increased by 17 percent. That's more than 8,000 across the city, almost all of them inspected only by the builders who put them up. There's a push now in city council to change that. Since the 2017 collapse of a sidewalk shed in Soho that nearly killed someone, these steel and wooden structures keep falling. Last March, cars were damaged, but no injuries when scaffolding collapsed on the Lower East Side. In April in Coney Island, people luckily escaped injuries when metal scaffolding rained down on their cars. And in May, a rickety sidewalk shed failed to protect a man from bricks falling from above. You should never have to worry about that type of thing collapsing on you. Former model Catherine Lafarve has been urging the mayor and city council to stop the spread of these structures ever since a sidewalk shed crashed down on top of her. Instead, these sheds keep multiplying, spreading, threatening to cover Manhattan in ugly steel and plywood. Since her near-death experience in 2017, 1,200 additional sheds have gone up adding about 30 more miles to the 300 miles of metal and wood hanging over city sidewalks. A total now of 8,197 sheds, and all of them self-inspected by those who built them. I don't think that the company that's putting up the scaffolding should be able to say, yeah, don't worry, we did a good job. City Councilman Ben Kalos is introducing a law that will replace self-certification by scaffolding companies with inspections by the buildings department at the cost of the building owner. When you have half a dozen scaffolds falling on people, that's a problem. And there's an easy solution. It's just make sure it gets inspected by somebody who isn't the person who put it up. Kalos believes charging building owners for inspections on a three-month cycle will push them to fix the facades in their buildings, allowing the scaffolding to come down. We found sidewalk sheds, though, that had been up for more than a decade, like this one in Harlem and this one in Central Park West. But nothing underscores the spread, the seeming permanence, and at times danger of these sheds than the one hanging over the sidewalk here, the city's buildings department, where this shed has stood for more than eight years. Every three months after that scaffolding goes up, they're gonna have to pay more and more, up to as much as $2,000 per inspection to make sure that that scaffolding is safe. A building department spokesman tells us they share the council members' desire to reduce the number of sidewalk sheds around the city. The city can and has imposed fines against owners who delay repairing their crumbling facades, which keep those sheds up for years. Here's the rub, though. The fines, they're rarely paid and almost never enforced.